This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. Today is Forgiveness Sunday. We are at the beginning of the Great Fast. We begin in the arena of struggle to take seriously our faith, not as an afterthought, not as a byproduct of happenstance or accident, but as an actual purposeful choice of our will to make our lives conform to eternal things rather than fall into the trap of believing eternal things must conform to us. Now, we live in a day and an age where that's a fairly radical idea. Because we live in a day and an age where Let's face it, folks, we're rich people. We just are. We're rich people. 90% of the world's population would change places with the poorest American on the planet right now, today. You mean you've got a cardboard box to live in? Wow. It is the delusion of our physical comfort that inoculates us and blinds us to the power and I'm going to say this word on purpose folks because so those of you who are wise you'll pay attention here the necessity the absolute necessity of great Lent now we heard some conflicting stories today in our scripture lessons the first one is from the Apostle Paul who tells us, now listen, nobody gets a big head about anything. That's the Father Barnabas translation. I think that makes the point rather well. Those of you who are fasting, you don't get to look down on those folks who aren't fasting. And those of you who proudfully say, I can do anything I wish, and so I choose not to fast, you don't get to look down on those folks who are keeping the fast. I always encourage people, everybody always asks me, so Father, what should I give up? Should I look at all the ingredients on the stuff that I buy in the grocery store? And the answer is always, of course, and never. <laughs> and the reason why it's like that, precious friends, is because if you get tempted by the keeping of the rules mentality, you'll miss the point. I love what St. John Chrysostom said. If you really want to fast during Great Lent, fast from sin. Don't, fa don't sin during Great Lent. Don't do it. Fast from sin. But then Jesus <laughs> throws all of that into whack when he says, if you don't forgive somebody else, God will not forgive you. I don't know about you guys, that bothers me. Makes me nervous. If you don't forgive your brother, God will not forgive you. Sounds pretty plain. Sounds like there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Then he goes on to say, when you fast. Notice he didn't say if you fast. When you fast. Don't fast like the hypocrites. The hypocrites wear a big sign around their neck saying, no, don't offer me any meat and dairy. I am fasting for the glory of God. Now the Bible says, Jesus declares they have a reward, but that's it. When somebody looks at you and says, oh, he's so spiritual. That's it, you're done. That's your reward. When the phone company asks to have its bill paid, see if you can pay, for, pay, pay with that uh, that. Uh, adulation you just got from somebody else. It won't happen. You got your reward. So when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast, 
Wash your face, anoint your head, and don't appear to men as if you are fasting. There's a great story about St. John Kronstadt, who was a very, very famous um, bishop in Russia in the 19th century. I believe it was the 19th century. And St. John would be invited to all of these wonderful, sumptuous meals, and he would take some of his brothers with him from the monastery, and St. John would sit at the meal, and he would eat what was put in front of him. And it scandalized the brothers, because sometimes they put meat and dairy in front of him during a fasting period. And St. John would have a bite of everything just to, to be polite. And the brothers were scandalized. Oh, Abba John is breaking the fast. He's not keeping the rules. What they didn't know is that John, for three days afterwards, would not eat anything after that. Not a thing. Nothing. I don't miss many meals, folks. But that's a commitment to the spirit of the fasting wisdom of the faith that teaches us something if we have ears to hear. And then finally, Jesus says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. If it can rust, go down in value, be stolen, wear out. Why in heaven's name are you giving your best efforts to those things? Better to give your best efforts to those things, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So why does Jesus say this today? If you forgive, you'll be forgiven when you fast and invest in eternity. Why does Jesus say this today? Because my precious angels, your greatest problem as an Orthodox Christian is not the fact that you're Greek or not Greek, Russian or not Russian, Serbian or not Serbian, whether you're rich or poor, wise or unwise, pretty or have a good personality. That's not your problem. Your problem is your soul is numbed by everyday life that has conned you into believing that you can put off thinking about eternal things till later. That is not true. And so the church in her love for you gives you the, the season of great Lent to wake you up, to ask you to say for only seven short weeks ask you to say no to very good things for a short period of time so that you can receive them back at Pascha with gratitude rather than the, uh, the, the numbness of acting like anything you want and pretending that life can, that you can put off eternity until later. Today is Forgiveness Sunday. It is the Sunday that we remember Adam and Eve sent from the garden. By the way, do you know why God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden? Because mom and dad didn't fast. Mom and dad didn't fast in the garden. God said you can eat anything you want except this one tree. Fast that. Fast it. Adam and Eve said no. We're going to do anything we want. And so what does God do? Does he punish them? No. God sends Adam and Eve out of the garden to protect them because the tree of life was also there. And God loved us so much that he could not tolerate the thought that we would be forever enslaved to a broken relationship with him by eating of the tree of life before we were ready. And so like any loving parent, God put his children as far away from, a, from a, a place of harm, a potential harm, as he possibly could. Now there were consequences to that. The ground wasn't going to give itself to Adam like it used to. Eve was going to have multiple pains in childbirth. And, you were going to, and Adam was going to have to work by the sweat of his brow to get his bread. But that's what happens when you break with life. So now the church offers you and me a way to do what Adam and Eve failed to do. We're given the opportunity to fast. And so we begin the great fast with forgiveness. At the Forgiveness Vespers later on this morning, you will come up to me and I will stand in front of you. And you know what I'm going to say to you? Forgive me. And you know what you're going to say? 
God forgives. Forgive me. And I'm going to say, God forgives us both. And that's how we're going to start the great fast, folks. And tomorrow, on Clean Monday, you're not going to eat meat and dairy. And you're not going to eat meat and dairy because you are willing to do what your mother and father in the garden refused to do. You're not going to eat meat and dairy for seven weeks. Father, how can I do that? I don't know. Good luck. I hope it turns out okay for you. Try. Guess what? You're not, you, you may not hit a home run every day. Okay. So what do you do? Oh, well, my, I blew it. My, it's like me and my diets. I blew it. I might as well just go ahead and eat the entire sheet cake. <laughs> That's not the way to do it, folks. You get back up and you start again. Because the fasting isn't about rule keeping. It's about keeping your soul awake to your need for God and the fact that God loves you so much He wants to prepare you to enjoy eternity. So do that. This is a joyous... You know what the, the fathers call Lent? The bright sadness. This is a joyous season that we run to and embrace with joy. I get to fast. I get to say no to my desires for a short period of time so that I can wake my soul up to my only true desire, and that is Jesus Christ. This morning, my angels, as we step into the arena for our souls, let us not turn back because the task appears to be too difficult. Because there's good news for you. You're weak, but he's strong. There's a great little thing. They're studying David and Goliath in Sunday school today. And there's a great little thing on the way to the bathroom. It says Goliath was nine feet tall. But God was bigger. During Great Lent, it's not easy. But God's bigger than your failures. God's bigger than your mistakes. God's bigger than your weakness. And if you'll just glance at him, he'll add every ounce of his strength to your weakness and you'll be whole. That's the good news of a purposeful orthodoxy. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.